water when it's low, and it also senses the water when the level's at the right height and shuts the feed down. You uh, have it? I think. think. The one, one word you left out, one word you left out that actually makes it the dual flow switch. See if you can find it in that drawing. Why, it's a double pole or something? No, you're on the right track? Single pole, double throw? It's a, it's a, high, it's a high and low flow? That's, that's, the, uh, that's the operation electrically. That's the operation mechanically. Uh, it is one, one single assembly that operates in two positions. In other words, it's like a single pole double throw switch. Right. It's two floats in one. Does the job, one single float that does the job of two. That's why they call it the dual float. All right. And these are easy to change. On the top here, you just twist it like 90 degrees and lift it out. It just snaps in and you drop the new one in, twist it 90 degrees, drop it out. There are two wires coming off of it. So it's, like a, it's like a cap on top of the soda. Yes. There's two wires coming off it with male ends or female ends, depends on what it is. And it goes up top <coughs> right into the control box, onto the board. All right. Everything is modular. Yeah. They come with Molex connectors where you, you just take the connector, <coughs> plug it into the um, controller board. Easy, simple. And this does not have that much electrics. Uh -huh. We have electrics to the float and control this. This is a solenoid valve, by the way, guys. This float operates that to open and close to fill this here. Okay, that's all this float does. Operate that, and in here too, there is also the low low water level um, cut out that in case it goes below that, it shuts down the whole system. Because again, we don't want the cylinder there to freeze up. And of course, with everything else, there is an overflow. So these floats are kind of adjustable. Now, the importance of filtering your water, guys, we need to get rid of almost every, every type of impurity. Um, any solid bits of impurity, any chemical type of impurity, we need to get rid of as much as that possible. I mean, that stainless steel cylinder, that's a stainless steel hobby. You don't find, you don't find a lot of stuff that can um, attack that to any degree to make it go bad, you know, it's a rust or anything. Stainless steel doesn't rust. But what will happen on the bottom here, there's a shaft seal. As well as on the t top, there's a bushing. Eat away the seal. So you do not want any kind of solid thing to be there on the face of the seal and kind of rub and grind it down. Because, yes, because if that seal starts leaking, it's going to leak into the gearbox. Even though it's not going to leak directly into the gearbox, it's going to be dripping and dripping and dripping. Eventually, it's going to chew away the gearbox because the gearbox is an aluminum body. It's not steel, stainless steel body, it's aluminum. So that would chew away anything. So every, some of these ice makers, every 1,000 hours or days about of operation, it goes into an automatic flush, where it empties everything from the reservoir there, and then we start the ice making cycle. And that's controlled by the 
control the controller board. You can do it if you choose to with a little switch. There actually there is a switch on the machine that while it's in the ice making cycle, you can press it and it's gonna go flush the whole thing while the machine is turning that auger. Okay? Because you will need the auger to agitate that water to get all the minerals or what have you out of that. And you can hold that button down to flush for as long as you choose to, because you can actually see the quality of the water coming out. Right. And this, where the system, remember I told you when the system cycles off before either then or before it starts the next, next ice making cycle, it drains everything out of that reservoir and out right. of the um, cylinder. So it starts with fresh water, okay? And while it is draining, the algae will be turning, but the compressor is off, okay? The refrigeration system will be off. Now, most of the time we do need, we can't continue making ice, making ice, making ice. If you're not using, eventually the ice level will build up. We need something to sense when it's built up. Most of them in the chute, that comes right out, there's a little flap of valve. And as ice builds up in the bin and it backs up in that chute, it moves the flap of valve like this, and it's, uh, um, it has a micro switch in it. And that shuts down the machine. When you begin to use ice again, that ice drops off of there, the flapper goes down, makes, um, makes an electrical circuit, starts up the machine to go back into its normal ice making cycle. Now, that's mechanic. They do have a sensor, electric sensor eye. Some of them have two of, the, two of these eyes that has this, um, let me show you how it works. See that little red spot? See? Good. In the bin, if, let's say, this is the level I want to, maximum level I want ice to be at. There is a <coughs> infrared eye there, and there's a reflector here. Okay? This, what this does, it sends a little light like that. So careful guys, don't look at it. All right? Yeah, if you look at this, you can get blind with it too. All right? And so as soon as the light stops to reflect yeah. back. Now, you... this has transmitter receiver. And this light reflects back to that, right? That's just yes. like the garage door motor. Yes. That. Yeah, it works like a garage door opener. So that's unbroken. Once it, that line is unbroken, it's going to keep on making ice. The moment the ice builds up there and it breaks that, you know, it comes and forms a barrier in between the two. No it tells the machine, hey, I can't see my partner across the room. You need to stop making ice and it shuts down the thing. So, yeah. But it's two, really, that's <sighs> <right>. Yes. <coughs> is it like the flat with the device? And well, this is a mechanical device that's in the thing, and they, they're still out there. A lot of so this. All right. You wouldn't see them both, you're saying? Not together. Okay. It's one or the other, all right? The older machines have these, okay? And right now, even with the newer machines made by a company named Hosazaki and Manitoba, to a lesser extent, but Hosazaki still has their machine with the mechanical flapper. Scotsman has theirs with the sensor both in the regular ice cube ice machine and the flake ice machine. Scotsman also have this here 
Um, what we call SONA technology. You ever heard that word? SONA? Yeah. Good. <laughs> this is the top of the bin. And this may be my ice maker head here, right? This is normally extended down. And right in here, there's a sonar generator that sends sound waves yeah. down to the bottom of this. Things right down to the right. bottom. And it actually senses the level of ice in here based on the distance between here and the top of that ice. And when the ice, yeah, when the ice gets to a predetermined level as set by the board, you can adjust it by the way there's some little tiny, tiny um, adjustment on the board. You can set this <coughs> level up. And when it comes to that predetermined level, it shuts the machine down so it does not make any more ice. So that's the sound wave principle. Of course, we have a good old reliable. I can put a thermostat bulb right here. And when the ice gets on the thermos, I probably shut down the machine. Right. So it's um, that's one of the actually that's all of the things. So this hose is actually still makes it here. This infrared Scotsman uh, make it Manitoba make it some wave. Both Scotsman and Manitoba has it, and um, they, Scots, Manitoba actually has developed what they call um, ice thickness. Their ice thickness sensor now is based on this principle. And it, if you actually listen to ice when it's being made on that evaporator, you're probably going to run because you think of somebody shooting at you. Mm -hmm. Because these ice crack worse than the ice is down in the North Pole or South Pole. Mm -hmm. Goes like bullet, bullet soft. But the good guys if um if some of these things fail, this fancy spanchy thing here, guess what? Good old reliable here. I can take that and control my eye, my set level, ice level in the bin, instead of this, 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 or this, or even this. This is, this is my fail safe. In any situation, it takes me out of, get me through a nasty, but it's a bad situation. That way you can have a customer machine in service, working, and you don't have to be concerned about this because this here, good old reliable, never throw away the old, mm -hmm. good old reliable takes over and it's going to work 100% perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. The machine wasn't designed to work with that, but hey, so my so customer has eyes. They're all just open and closed switch. Yes. Yeah. That's all they are. My customer has eyes, he can make his customer happy, and hopefully he's happy enough to pay me. Uh, sure, you know. Because he has to pay me for that service call, because when I get the right part, he pay me for that service mm -hmm. call. And you know, a lot of guys, when they realize what you did to get them through, and do not, you know, ha have a break in their business, you know, hey, everything here is customer based, you know. And, um, I still do respect the customer because if I can make them happy, they call you back. then they will call me back and see if they make you happy. Yeah. And so, I want to check this. <laughs> now, some of these things, are, guys, this is not only um, applicable to flake ice machine. These same controllers here, or oh. sensors, is for the cube ice machine or any other type of machine that we have. They work because they, all they do is sense the level of ice in the storage bin. 
They have nothing to do with the operation itself and production of what type of ice you're making. They, they couldn't care less what type of ice is in there so long as it's sea ice. Now, production performance data, self-contained machine, of course it will be dependent on water temperature and air temperature. Two factors, water temperature, air temperature. Because the colder the water going into the ice maker at the beginning of a cycle, the faster it will make ice. You agree with me? Now, the colder the air is around the machine, the faster it will also make ice because we're going to get uh, cooler condenser gas, condenser liquid, going into the system. And the colder the liquid, the condenser, um, condensed refrigerant goes in, or liquid refrigerant goes into that metering device, the more heat energy it can absorb before it actually boils off. And, um, you know, water is the whole, same principle holds true here. We still need one BTU per pound of water to reduce the temperature one degree Fahrenheit. So if I have a um, five gallon reservoir in my ice machine, that's about how much pumps, if you guys remember, five gallons. How much actually? Well, a gallon is 8.43 pounds. pounds. Right. 40, 41, 42 pounds. About 42 pounds, I put it there. You know, it's slightly under, but uh, it's negligible under. So about 42 pounds. So I need to have, um, if I'm circulating 42 pounds of water there per minute, I need to have 42 BTUs per minute removal to drop the temperature of that water one degree. So. If my water temperature goes in there at 65 degrees, I only have to drop it like 32, 37, right? 28, no, bring it down to 28. 28 to 65 is 37, yeah. right? I only need to remove 37 BTUs for that minute. But if my water, temperature goes up to 70 degrees coming in, I need to bring it down by um, an extra 5 degrees, 40, 40. which is 42 degrees. So, you know, 42 BTU. So you see how the water temperature has an effect on ice production. Now, air production around the machine. Generally speaking, the higher the ambient, the longer it takes for the machine to make a batch of ice. Because you have higher condensing temperatures, the heat around the ice bin and around the ice machine increases, so it takes longer. At uh, when the condenser, when the liquid refrigerant is hot, it does not um, have room to absorb that much more BTU than when it's cold. If you look at their proportion, so. Ice production decreases as water temperature increases. It also <coughs> decreases as ambient temperature increases. So increase in both will decrease your ice production. Okay, as you decrease both of these, follows that you will increase the ice production. So ambient, and entering air or entering air on water temperature determines your um, level of production or the amount. Now remember, I was telling you that these flake ice machine we can adjust the die on top or change the die on top to give you large or smaller. There is just something they repeat in here. So the cutting head can be. Um, change and you can get small, semi-small, a little bit larger, ice cube and cubelet and clay guys. All from one machine. So it does allow you to, because you will be, 
you will see machines designated as cubelet or flay. That doesn't necessarily mean it is only one. I can make this, do that if I buy the right dye. And those dyes, they're not that expensive. <laughs> Never write. Wait a while, did you guys write the one before that? Yeah. Oh, good. Damn, you were fast. Mm You guys are familiar with this word extrusion? You are, right? No, I'm not. Extrusion. The head stick out a little bit. Oh, yeah, something sticks out. No, it's when you, if I am, it's when you, when you pass liquid or semi-liquid with some kind of force through a dye to form something. To okay. a dye? To a form in dye. A form. Like for crushed ice? Like this. We take in an organ, we pass in it ice through, um, through the cutting head, which is a form in dye. Right. To give us one or the other. Like so that's extruded. Like you're like, talking about the, head, the ice cube oh. with the hole in it? Oh. Yeah, like those. Like if you am, um, like if you're making ground meat for hamburger yeah. and um, hot dogs. You know the hamburger won't be coarser than hot yeah. dogs. So yeah. that head, you can change the head to make it, the meat come out like uh, soup or you can make it come out like in chunks. Yeah. So those, you're extruding that meat. Yeah, extruding. Right, so it's passing something through uh, a, a dye. They call it a dye, which is pre-shaped. <coughs> whatever you want the final product to be. Now we had, um, we didn't cover this, but that question about it. Flat ice cut into cube. Using the grid. See? The wire grid. Yeah. yeah. I haven't seen this technology in, in like, since 1988. <laughs> <laughs> Serious, I haven't seen this technology used since 1988. The, the company that made the, their ice like this is I'm, don't worry, I'm gonna get there anyway. The company that made that technology was called Ross Tem. And they stopped making because they were bought over by somebody else, and then they were bought over by somebody else. They were sold and resold so many times that people forget their names. Mm -hmm. Even the guys who buy the company probably forget what name they started out with. But Ross Temp is a, um, one, and the, the grids, they're stainless steel lines that crisscrosses in square. You know, we have um, like a tray like this, which would be the same size as a sheet of ice. And then we'll have these grids right here. And by the way, it's two grids that's gonna overlap each other. And this will be positive, this will be negative. Yeah. All right. So this will be 
power supply to the two to the two, to the two set of wires. Like I said, these are stainless steel wires. Um, the wire we actually use here is a wire you make up fission fission um, hooks with the ends when you make up the fly and everything. Right. So regular stainless steel wire that you get in a fish bait and tackle shop is what we use here. And that's, that's heated up. Um, see, once the ice slides onto the sheet and it senses that weight, it energizes the sheet and the ice just sit there and it get cut into squares and it just drop right down. So this was a, the question there, and um, I think you guys found the answer, right? Yeah. I, mean, I, 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 I hope so. I just, I just figured he'd agree. I stand with it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So this is how it works, guys. Water from the distributor here flows on top of this slope, flat um, evaporator plate. System is running. This is the tubing where the refrigerant goes through. And it makes ice here because the water is continuously running here. When the ice, um, now, how do you think this machine sends when the ice is at the right thickness? Wait. Uh, by the by the laser or the sonar? No. No. Um. Way back from when, or maybe early in this class, you agree with me as that as temperature falls, or as temperature goes low, pressure in this is the refrigeration system on the low side will go low, right? Yeah. Now, as I'm building up ice here, I am in effect insulating this plate, right? right. Yeah. And if I insulate this plate from that, what's going to happen to the pressure there? It's going to drop. It's going to go drop, right? So now, this here has... This here has a pressure switch in the lower side that senses that pressure that corresponds to when this ice is built up to like maybe half an inch. And when it gets there, it's what we call a um, reverse acting low pressure control. So that instead of um, opening to shut down something, this low pressure control closes to energize the hot gas system to get this ice off of that grid. And we're going to get into harvesting in a minute. All right? So it initiates harvest then. So always remember that term low. It's like a, like a, yeah, like a relay. Yes. Yeah. So always remember that term, reverse acting low pressure control. It's not a cutout, right? Manual. It's a control. It starts and stops an operation. That's what control does. Cut out, shuts it down, period. So here's here's my sum pump water up into the water manifold distributor, sprays it across, it comes on back into here, and that cycle goes on. So when this forms the ice, it slides right down into the grid. The grid is uh, energized, and it cuts into So now, When we make cube ice, <coughs> 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 
No, I mean, these, it does not necessarily have to be cut, but if, it, if you're making cubes that are shaped like cups, the cups will normally be facing downward. It's like upside down cups, and um, it will be That would be my refrigeration line, and this would be the cups right here. These are not uniform, but uh, I mean, you get the idea, right? And we spray water. So here we have the refrigeration circuit with the cup upside down and we spray water up into these cups. And the ice star builds up from the bottom here. The top or bottom? No. We make it in here, right? Yeah. But Ice is going to begin to form at the coalesce point, and the coalesce point is where this tubing is braced onto the cup itself, right? Uh -huh. And then it's just going to build up. Uh -huh. So these are um, these are my horizontal upside down evaporator, but it is horizontal in order for me to get these cups. If it was like this, it would be difficult for the ice to fall out. There's no gravity assisted harvesting at that point. And these cups, by the way, they can take any different shape. They can be like that. They can be um, cylindrical. They can be like that, half moon or a crescent moon. So they take any shape, whatever you want the ice cube to end up shaping like. That's how they make the cup. Yes, sir. The water just sprays up into the cup or the recycled back into the sump? Yes. This water keeps recycled back in, in the sump. Now, how how these machines make ice? They fill the sump and the machine stops filling when it reaches a certain level. And they are different metals of sensing the ice cube size. Now these are what we call batch makers. Because if the machine fills up with a given amount of water and shuts down, then it's going to use all of that water to make ice. And most of the time, when that water level is about three quarters or maybe half inch from the bottom, there is a float that's going to tell the machine here, listen, my water is finished, it's time to harvest the ice. So it goes batch by batch. So it is a batch maker. Whatever amount of water was filled in there in the first place is whatever, that's what we're going to make ice with. Not keep on adding water all the time. The older ice makers used to keep adding water as they use water. And what happens to you adding? warm water, um, room, room temperature water to, to a sump that's practically at freezing and you're bringing up that temperature so it's going to take a longer time for you to make ice. So they start making this batch ice um, makers now. So whatever water comes in initially, that's the amount of water I'm going to use to make a batch of ice. And then the cycle just keeps repeating itself. Now when this here is, um, whatever senses the ice thickness in here, it's going to tell this machine I'm ready to harvest. What happens, hot gas is now, when it goes into harvest, hot gas is directed through each of these refrigerant tubing. The water pump 
it's gonna shut off when that happens. But the water supply solenoid to fill the sump will open and pass water on the top here too. So that's another assist for the harvest. And while that's happening, the sump drain is gonna to open to get rid of all whatever sediment was in there. So we're, we're flushing this sump, filling with water, harvesting all at the same time. And after a given period of time, the drain solenoid shuts down, it <coughs> continues filling with water, all these ice drop, and there is a time, um, it is adjustable, but there's a time limit. Three and a half minutes is like tops with every ice machine to stay in harvest. After three and a half minutes, regardless, it kicks itself out the harvest and goes back. Because we do not want hot gas to be flowing over this evaporator coil nonstop. It's gonna burn it. And these things are um, nickel coated. So you can actually burn the nickel off of it. You do not want that. So that's the whole ice making cycle and harvesting in a nutshell. So, so um, after the harvest, all of this falls out. This typically is at a, um, this spray section is at an angle. So when the ice drops, it goes by gravity into the bin. This looks bad in between. That's a far better drawing, right? <laughs> okay, you see it? How it, um, <clears throat> yeah, their water spray is better than mine too. This is actually the cup. I see, yeah. All right? This is the evaporator tube in. That's one line is on top of the cup, the other is on the side of the cup here. Uh, all right. But it is set in such a way that the ice does not form on this. This is just a pictorial, this pictorial is just for uh, illustration purposes. In real life, it's not going to be touching you know, the ice, right? Yes, the ice would not be touching that. See how the ice builds up in there? And then it's ready to harvest hot gas. This is, represents hot gas coming through there. That's the outside, it drops. And it drops. In the meantime, water, the water um, valve opens and water also runs on top of this here to assist. It's called ha water harvest assist. So, Crescent, uh, um, who is it? Hosezaki. Hosezaki makes the crescent ice cubes. That, for the time being, that's proprietary. To, um, it's patented for Hosezaki. Uh, but uh, as soon as that patent runs out, everybody's going to jump on this bandwagon. Guys, those exact machine when they produce ice, they produce ice. Like crazy. Um, I like it because they're recovery time, meaning if you go in in the morning, you have a bar or a restaurant, and you go in, you know, you start the service at 10. And you guys, you know, your people start taking eyes out the day from like around nine and distribute it to the bar and the kitchen and what have you, and practically empty your bin. By the time they ask, you're ready for dinner service, that machine is almost filled again. Almost, I dare say full, right? It's almost full again, so they have a rapid recovery time. Uh, all that's dependent on if you do good housekeeping on them. Ice makers, 
You need to treat them like a like a baby that's just being born. When they when they make eyes, you love them. When they don't, they can be a headache. Because at the you know the rate time um, ice is sold, especially in the summer months, you never guarantee you get all the ice you need. And when you go and buy ice, it's kind of like on the high side. You know, ice is ice price comparatively speaking is ridiculously high. You know, I know some restaurants they spend if their ice machine was done, they spend like five hundred dollars just in ice for dinner service alone. Uh -huh. So now the, these machinery makes crescent ice. They are batch ice makers. Water fills up to a certain level in the reservoir. There is a float that co controls that. All right, <coughs> controls the level up, and I'll tell you what the float does afterward. Now, when the water pump starts and it goes into the ice maker, ice making cycle. That thing is like that, right? And the ice is made like this. And right here, at the back of that, is the refrigeration tube in. <coughs> it sticks to it because what? Ice will stick, water will stick to that because it's freezing, right? Mm -hmm. And water, the water runs down here, okay? As the water runs down there, this starts from a little crescent uh -huh. to a big crescent. And there, if you look at it from the front, okay, it's just this. Stainless steel strip. And just cascade the water. Yeah, these are stainless steel strips, and it's a flat plate evaporated in the back with these stainless steel strips here. And water runs down here. You know, this, and the side view, this is how they're made. All right. This is specific to Hosasaki ice machine, present. And as the water level drop, because you're making the ice here now, because as ice form, water level in the reservoir drops, the float, which is adjustable, you can adjust, that's how you adjust the cube size. You raise or lower the float. If you lower the float, it's gonna have, you have to use more water. That means the ice cubes are gonna be bigger. If you raise the float, you use less water, that means these are gonna be smaller. But we do need like close to maximum setting. Because you want this ice when it drops in that bin. It stays in that bin for at least 24 hours without melting like crazy. So the smaller these will be, the faster they will melt. And they form one big roller ball, right? So when this water drops to that level that the float is set at, it initiates the harvest. In that it de-energizes the refrigerating solenoid coil, the liquid line coil, and opens what we call a hot gas coil. You guys are familiar with hot gas defrost? This is where it's applicable. It opens the hot gas, sell hot gas through these. Same time, the water, the water solenoid opens up and water runs behind these, um, behind the ice cubes. Yeah. All right? Same time, the water pump reverses and dumps whatever water is in there to flush the system. Right. Right. So after every then the cube just slides straight down. After every harvest, it's flushing out. Yes, after every harvest, it's flush and fills with new fresh water for the next batch. And it keeps doing that until the bin is filled. Right. And I'm going to give you the... I'm going to give you the cycle from start to finish and in between. Okay. Guys, break time. Let's take a...
Scary.